another example is mind mapping project scope. Often when we first talk about what's the scope of a project and what does the team want to accomplish, we go through a scope definition phase. And that often can be the result of a brainstorming workshop. And usually with brainstorming, you can use index cards to think of ideas and, and put them up on a, on a note board. Uh, at the same time, if you're using a distributed team, a mind map is one effective way to start capturing those brainstorming ideas as people throw out the ideas, and then from there we reprioritize and uh, facilitate the meeting. So you're able to help capture the project scope ideas, the deliverables, the requirements. Uh, and I'm sure you can relate to being in these meetings where you've defined scope, and it's not a linear conversation. Uh, it's not like you start first start out with, well, what are your functional requirements? What are your non-functional requirements? Uh, these types of discussions tend to go all over the place, and mind maps are helpful in capturing that response and being able to create little clouds and, and little uh, nodes that they can capture the information about. So it also allows you to define an initial core set of tasks and resources. And if you use some of those features that do in some of these software pra packages, you can start building the shell of your uh, Microsoft project schedule. So here's one example of a template that is used to generate uh, scope for a given program. And so here in this model, you see there's a, a, a basic project summary that's available, as well as project deliverables. There's hardware, software requirements, as well as business impact. And by building an agenda around scope, you're able to identify the details and capture the discussion as they continue with what do they want to see in the scope of the, the project or the program. So another nice feature in this particular uh, software package with MindJet Mind Manager is the ability to export it into Microsoft Project. So in this example, I built a very simple project schedule, which uh, just has one phase. And I go through the steps of initiating a project, developing a project charter, defining project scope, developing that initial project schedule, and then going into an implementation phase. So it's a very rudimentary project schedule, but it's the result of an initial high-level conversation with the business on where we want to go. Um, so what I've been able to do is assign PMO resources, project management resources, business analysts, and then the entire project team against these individual nodes in the mind map. And then with just one click, I'm able to export that immediately into Microsoft Project. And from there, then I would do more resource leveling and the more detailed uh, project level tuning in the project level uh, work right down the structured definition. But this is just one example of how you can help improve your project management efficiency by using some of these tools and putting it into another format. Now, for smaller projects, you may even want to just use mind maps to, to track the key tasks that you're, you're progressing against and use that as, as your schedule. You know, we see a variety of um, maturity in different organizations where they, they use Excel, they use simple task lists, or they range to full integrated Microsoft project schedules that are in some type of a portfolio management tool. Another nice feature is you can use a mind map to talk about your specific project status. And this has been just for presenting out to your executive or your stakeholder management. But think about when you go through the process of facilitating a project schedule review with your team and you want to get updates to key tasks and you want to understand where is the team having issues or having concerns. One nice feature is you're able to go in and highlight a set of tasks that you see here in yellow. And with one click, you're able to export that into a mind map. And so in this case, I've exported uh, three tasks, defining scope, initiate the project, and developing the project charter. And it already has the individual uh, dates and the resources, but now I can have a discussion with the team, and I can actually update the uh, progress, which you see are these little uh, squares that, uh, in this case, one square under the developed charter is filled out to be 75% complete. Under initiate project, the little square is filled out 25%. So it's one quick way to get an assessment of a percentage complete against an individual node. Um, but what I really like using this for is, is capturing the notes and the discussion about that particular task or that particular item. And from there, you can use that as input into a, a project status report or another formal uh, reporting repository if you're using a project management system. You know, these are just other tools that help improve your own efficiency and, and capture this information rather than always having to transcribe it into a, a legal notepad or uh, into some type of Microsoft Word document. Another area to look at is how can you use mind maps to help uh, mind map risk? Uh, when you look at risk management processes, you go through some type of risk identification, risk categorization, and risk prioritization. And here is an example of uh, three mind maps. Now, in this case, I used a tool called FreeMind, which is an open-sourced mind management application. 
and I'm able to discuss or identify um, the, all the different risks that are associated with a particular project. And I would do that within a facilitated session as we try to brainstorm risk and identify risk. And then after we've identified all the risks, we go through a categorization phase. And here you see on the right where some of these risks are categorized under red, blue, and uh, green colors. And you know, here I, I chose to categorize them around scope, time, and resources. And then finally, you go into a prioritization. We're able to take that same mind map and actually assign some of the priority of those risks and using uh, numeric icons against the different nodes. So this is one example of the uh, NGT risk management or risk identification technique. So mind mapping actually has uh, other applications, not just in the project management domain uh, in terms of project execution, but even in your own career. Uh, you know, there's plenty of applications of, of mind mapping, how you can apply it to your career and development from a training perspective and even from interviewing. Uh, you know, For every job interview I've had, I've always created a simple mind map that contains an elevator speech with you know, key scenarios that I can refer back to in my experience. As I'm trying to anticipate, well, what could the interviewer possibly ask? I want to have a set of scenarios in my mind that I can refer back to. And so, you know, 10 minutes before I go into an interview, I, you know, before I go into the office, I simply pull out that mind map and do a quick review as a way to help prepare yourself for the discussion. So here's an example of what that might look like for interview preparation. You know, here I have a node for background where you know, I actually come in with my elevator speech, which is my you know, one to two minute introduction about myself. Talk a little bit about delivery experience, education, any type of certifications. Um, I'm also want to capture notes about the company. So you know, previously, I've done research on a company to understand, well, what's their main product, what's their current financials, how do, what business are they in, as well as you know, who are my interviewers and who are the main people I need to speak with throughout the day. Uh, and then on the left-hand side, I've created a node called Position. And this is where I've researched the position description, and you know, I've thought about key questions that I want to ask them. You know, what, what's the project scope, complexity, what resources are available? Are there any existing issues that are related to that specific project? So in my mind, I'm preparing myself for what type of uh, intelligent questions do I want to ask during the interview. Um, you know, also, I start thinking about recent experiences that I've had that are similar to the position that I'm interviewing for. Um, and I start trying to anticipate some of the questions that they may ask. You know, often when you go in for an interview that's similar to your experience, they're going to want to know where have you had experience in, in other jobs or other roles that are similar to the challenge of the project that the team is delivering. And this goes into the scenarios node, which is the, the last node in this mind map, where you know there I start brainstorming ideas about well how have I done leadership, customer satisfaction, technical project management. So I'm able to speak to both the leadership behaviors that you see within the project management domain as well as the technical skills. Um, you know, interviewing it can be nerve wracking. You know, trying to go through all these interviews and, and having these discussions, uh, people can get nervous. And you know, why not use a simple mind map to give you a little bit of help and a little bit more um, preparation going into the next interview?